Good afternoon and welcome to Positive the Series. I'm your host, Jerome Singletary, and I have the esteemed honor of sitting in the lovely kitchen of Miss Stephanie Brooks Wiggins. She is a community activist here in Baltimore. She sits on a, the Mayor's uh, Health Commission Planning Council, and um, she's one of the founding members of Oh Well, Older Women Embracing Life. And she has an amazing story to tell, and I think everyone at home will benefit from hearing your testimony. So oh. thank you for having me. Well, thank you for asking me to talk about my journey. So let's jump right in, Stephanie. Yeah. Talk about when you first came into the whole world of HIV and all things related there, too. Well, uh, it wasn't kind of something that I knew about. I, I didn't know what HIV was. I had, didn't have a clue. Right. And um, I gave blood, a blood drive for the Red Cross in 1986 uh, for my job I was working with. And um, I got a letter from the Red Cross saying that I needed to come to their offices. Um, they had to have a consult with me about my blood work. Mm -hmm. And I was terrified because I couldn't imagine what was wrong with my blood. I was never sick. Right. Um, I didn't even have a doctor. I was newly yeah. married, new to Baltimore, um, raised my three children in New York, and right. my children were grown, and here I was having to go to the Red Cross. I was wow. floored, but I went. Yes. And uh, this little room <laughs> about the size of a closet, mm -hmm. and it was very kind of dark and uh, not welcoming. Not at all, uh, sure. And the lady told me I had been exposed to the human immunodeficiency virus. And I asked her what that was. Right. Because uh, it sounded terrible, but I mean, mm -hmm. and she told me that there was no cure and that the prognosis was that I probably would live 10 more years and then die. And that uh, if I had a partner, that I had to notify my partner because they had to be tested. And you were a newlywed. And I was like, okay. And uh, she was referring me to Hopkins. Mm -hmm. And all I could think about was the fact that I had a new husband. Right. And I had to go home and tell him this news. And I didn't know how he would react. Mm -hmm. So I went to his job. <laughs> <laughs> you figured if you... I figured I was doing it for right, public right, right. <laughs> He I couldn't tell you. Right? Yes. <laughs> and I went to his job and I got him by himself and I talked to him. Excuse me. Uh, excuse me, but sure. I talked to him about I talked to him about um what was going on. And uh he said, Well, uh I'll go get tested and we'll just find out what we're going to do from there. Yes. And that was 33 years ago, and we're still hanging out together. <laughs> yes, I mean, and that's God right there. Yes. Because there are yes. a lot of our brother, black brothers that would leave for a lot less and have. Well, hmm. that's true love. That is true love. That's true love. And and like you said, God was in our way. Yeah. And uh, he, he blessed us. He ordered my steps and his steps. And for the first four or five years, I didn't do much of anything. Mm -hmm. I just tried to learn all I could learn about HIV yes. um, and kind of talk to my family right. about what may, they might expect, what I knew. How did your family react? Well, they didn't know what it was either. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were surprised. Yes. And, um, we didn't really talk about it much. Um, but there was never. But there was any never any, never or, any recriminations. That's no, fantastic. no finger finger pointing Ooh, God, or anything you are like so that. Blessed. Um, we went to work every day. Um, we had friends over. Um, I was saying to my husband this morning. I remember when we used to have Christmas parties mm -hmm. every year, and invite our work family and our yeah. friends and stuff. And we just went on until I did get sick. I did. I got really sick. And um, the, rather than put me in the hospital, the doctor convalesced me at home. At home, wow. Because she said I would die in the hospital. Yeah. Just being ex be, having the virus and being exposed to other germs was Absolutely really a danger. Absolutely, a danger, yeah. So yeah. she, that uh, makes sense. Yeah, she that ordered, makes a lot of ordered sense. my care at home, and I had 
IVs and nurses come every right. day. And, right. the, and during that time, I educated myself yeah. about HIV. And I think it's important, you know, I don't want that important point to get slipped by with, without being noticed. A lot of folks think that we somehow uh, are a danger to them. But it's really the other way around. It's really you're more susceptible to the germs Speak and on that. things <laughs> that, uh, and I know that for a fact in the 33 years that I've lived with this disease, because at one time, every time I was around my girl, grandchildren, and you know those little grandchildren, oh, petri dishes yes. with all their germs, I have been in a car with them mm -hmm. and ended up in the hospital mm -hmm. the next day. I, I've had the same situation with so you can't place. tell me that I'm a danger to you. You yeah. are a danger to me. Yeah, because I my immune system is wrecked. Wrecked. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't. We're we're compromised. You know, we're and, and, and people don't know yeah. that. Yeah. You know, people don't know that. I always compare our immune system to a computer chip, mm -hmm. and we have a chip that's been damaged. Been damaged. Yeah. So. You know, that makes me susceptible to all the Absolutely. viruses that hit the computer. There's a glitch in the <laughs> There's system. There's a glitch in the system. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, but during that time, I educated myself yes. of, from what I could find about HIV. And, you know, they weren't talking to women. Right. Because I mean, there weren't gay many disease. women. And I thought to myself, well, wait a minute. <laughs> Why is this called a gay disease? If I got it, right. I'm not gay. You're not gay. Right. right. And... They weren't talking to black people. Right. No, because it was a white man's disease. A white gay man's and disease. And people still That's think that. Yes. You know, that it's mm -hmm. a gay white man's mm -hmm. disease. And so mm -hmm. in my Hello. education, <laughs> yeah, Hello. right, right? In my education, mm -hmm. um, I began to uh, reach out mm -hmm. to people. And I started to expose myself um, writing for the University of Maryland's newsletter yes. and, and I was working until I got sick I was working and um, I started going to the doctors a lot yes. you know from work and my supervisors wanted to know was I sick what was going on and I told them mm -hmm. and they fired me <laughs> yeah you know, and yeah. and it was interesting because it was a time when people were losing their jobs because of being HIV because of HIV, but people weren't talking about why they lost their jobs. Right. Employers there was so much stigma. Employers were being yeah. very careful, and the reason why they let me go was because they said I was a liability yes. to the staff. <laughs> Ooh, wow. And, and how long ago was this? This was in 1986. Wow. I have a very similar 87. situation in 2012. So. Wow. Well, you know, <laughs> they knew, they were smart enough to mm -hmm. know that if I wanted to sue them, I had real yeah. good grounds to carry a case. Yeah. But what they didn't know was that I was smart enough to know that if I did that, I would label myself. Right. In the community, yes, out in public, Absolutely. and then I would have a tr have trouble getting a job right. anywhere. You'd be a pariah. I'd be yeah. a pariah. So I didn't sue them, and to cover themselves, they paid me my salary for a year. Oh, every <laughs> and <laughs> health payday benefits? and health benefits. That is fantastic. Every payday, I went to the bank and. Draw out my money. All right. Went right, right into my checking again. All right. Everything. But what well, well, you are And it's interesting <laughs> because I wanted to see how far they would go. And I called there. I work for HR. Mm -hmm. And I called HR one day and asked them for a reference for myself. Okay. Tell them like I was an employer. And they couldn't find my file. Really? <laughs> I thought that was really interesting. That is interesting. You know? Rather than say... Anything about you, they said nothing. I just disappeared. Okay, off the day. interesting. And it yeah. was very interesting to me. So after I um, didn't have a job, I started to think about what I could do. Right. Because I wasn't hearing any information for me. Mm -hmm. And so I went to Hero because I had heard about Hero. Yes. And I applied for a job and I got a job. And I was entering, I worked at their data and stuff, and I entered yes. their names. And through that, I began to meet a lot of people, like 
the guys who were running the PWA mm -hmm. coalition. Yes. And our our founding fathers. Our founding as, fathers. As yes. we like to love them. They were the them. gay men in Baltimore who yes. were at the front line. Yes, we're talking about PJ, we're PJ, talking PJ about Carlton, 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 we're talking Smith, about Kevin, Lenny Green, yep. uh, Billy, I can't think of Billy's last name, right? What's Billy's last name? Well, anyway, yeah. All of those guys belong to the uh, Baltimore Planning Commission, which was one of the first commissions. The first planning on Council? On HIV, yeah, wow. which was through HRSA. Yes. And um, they took me everywhere. You were the mascot. They taught me. Yes, I was their mascot. <laughs> they taught me how to advocate. They taught me about the Ryan White regs. Mm -hmm. um, they taught me about how to advocate for myself. Right. So here I was. This so black you guys woman. kind of developed leap, huh? Yes, yeah, huh? yes. So yeah. here I was, this black woman going around with these guys. And they used to laugh and say, if you see her, you're going to see all of them. Right. Well, if you see them, you if, I see would, right. if I would go somewhere, they'd say, well, where's your group? Where's right, where's, where's, where's your group? Right. And I think, and I know for a fact that that probably saved my life. Absolutely, I'm because sure. Because I had a support group. You had a support group. And I'm telling you, we die when we isolate. We really do. We really do. Yeah. And so I mean, does that, how does that, how did that... Because you're talking about a bunch of guys. How did that How translate, did that to, translate to, oh, well. to, oh, wow, older well, women embracing Well, I started, women. I became a public figure. I was mm -hmm. an advocate. And um, <laughs> Dorcas Baker, who is the founding member yes. of, oh, well, the founder of, oh, well. She lives across angel. the street. <laughs> yeah. Really? That's we, why we call this small We knew more. each other <laughs> as neighbors. Yes. But I didn't know where she worked or what she did. Right. And she didn't know anything about anything me. Anything about you, yeah. And then my husband was getting his blood work done at Hopkins mm -hmm. once a month, and she was his nurse. <laughs> and then she met me, and she heard about me through Wild. her work with HIV. Right. So she asked me one day would I consent to being on a video. She was getting a few black women together mm -hmm. to talk about being a black woman living mm -hmm. in HIV. Mm -hmm. And I said, sure. And that's where it started. That's wow. how it started. So we did a video, and um, my sister she 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 got to she she knew my sister from somewhere. Okay. And she didn't know she was my so sister was your, was your until sister. she was telling me who was going to be in the video. And I was like, "But that's my sister." That's my, <laughs> like, she didn't call me. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so all of us were in this video, and. Um, Hopkins um, had a group called Group Ministries. Mm -hmm. It was a community-based organization, and they underwrote it. Wow. And so we did this. This video. is some real history here, ladies and, and gentlemen. Uh, it got out. It didn't do as quite as well as we wanted it to, because mm -hmm. there was so much stigma and a lot right. of stuff going on. Right. But we did get it out. And a guy named Ron Israel, who is a videographer, well known in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. He does the Naked Cowboy in, yeah. in, in New York. In New York, yes. He filmed it. Oh, okay. Yeah, he did the See, video. Again, he filmed it. Real history here. And um, so we did that. And then she came back and asked us about forming a support group for women. Because as we got to talk about being HIV in Baltimore and being black women, we started talking about there was no support right. system. There was no way, nowhere for us to go and talk about the things we were experiencing. Right. And, and there were many more of And there those... were many more of those stories around mm -hmm. people. Um, and constructs because... set up to support the men. Yes. There were lots of stuff for right. men. But they weren't talking to women. Right. And you guys have separate issues. Yes. Separate concerns. Yes. And so, um, Oh Well was the first women's support group in Maryland. Uh -huh. In the country, probably. And we still are probably one of the few women support groups in the country because everywhere we go we hear about women wanting to start a support group because there are none. So do you, have so. you guys been able to and I want you to talk a little bit about what Oh Well does in the, mm -hmm. the how, how do you support women? Well we have a support group meeting once a month mm -hmm. the third Wednesday of every month and we share stories um, we share information. Yes. We teach women to be advocates for their own health. Mm -hmm. um, 
That's you'd, be very important. you'd be surprised how many women have not told their families or their associates yeah, still that living in secret. they are infected with HIV. So we provide a, a space. What stays in the space stays in the space. Yes. Right? Confidentiality. Confidentiality. And we have people come in to talk to us about medication, lifestyles, um, all kinds of things. We have a conference. Now we, oh, so now that we're 15 years into mm -hmm. being a support group, we have a women's conference every called. October called Legends and Youngins. Yes, I love that And we title. got that name from Oprah because <laughs> she did her Legends and Youngins yes. get together. So we said, well, we have Legends. And those are women that are long time, long term survivors. Yes. And then we have young ones, those women who are newly diagnosed. Mm -hmm. And it is phenomenal. The women that come out. I mean, we usually have about two hundred women show uh, up yeah, at Morgan. I, I've I've heard you guys really do because well, we're not allowed. <laughs> right. No men. No men. Just women. And we have raffles, and we have. Uh, motivational speakers and we break out into uh, workshops we yes. do uh, domestic violence we do substance abuse we talk about all kinds of things that That's are related to women we um, give away turkeys at Thanksgiving mm -hmm. we just yep, we gave just away 100 turkeys at the wax the center yes. testing for turkeys anybody can come get tested and yeah. they'll get a free turkey and that was when I was like I wanted to no, if I could have come got tested so I yes, could get a turkey. Could have, oh, I could have. Yes, you could have, yes. And I we figured do, you guys already knew the answer. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we do um, HIV and aging mm -hmm. um, conference every year. Yes. And we have speakers come. and So those are the things we do. Plus, we, we go to different places, different conferences. We're invited to different conferences. Yes. I've been invited to speak um, at the a, a, um, Atlantic um AETC AIDS um, education training yep. uh, group, yes. which is central for Central United States. Oh, so the I, AETC, yes, yes. Yes, I've been invited to speak in West Virginia right. um, at their AETC annual meeting. So we, we do, we, we do a lot of stuff. So we support women. Yeah. We invite any woman to come and join yeah, us. Yeah, and I can remember. And it's not just people, who, women who are infected. We also talk to women who are uh, affected, affected, who have family members. We have grandmothers who talk have daughters yes. who are infected. Yes. Yeah, so. Absolutely. And it, it impacts everyone. Yes. See, and that's the thing. Yes. It's not just yours and my problem. No. It's everybody's problem because yes. either you are infected or you know someone who's infected. And that impact, I mean, can you speak a little bit about the... The, the some of the concerns and things that you hear from women who are, are affected by um, well the concerns are um, what do they do as they get older mm -hmm. you know that that's a big concern these days because we are living uh, with a population that's living longer yes. and a lot of comorbidities um, are taking precedence over HIV mm -hmm. um, I myself recently had a heart attack. Right. Yes, um, I'm sorry to hear that. I yeah. didn't remember hearing because about of being that. HIV. I'm at a higher risk yes. for heart disease. For heart disease. Yeah. So when you get to a certain point having this disease, aging becomes the primary factor because we're your doing it exponentially faster, right? Yes. Yeah. And rather than the HIV, right? Um, it helps to be uh, suppressed, virally yes. suppressed. But it doesn't take away the fact that your body now is in a high risk. Absolutely. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, it's tough because like I always tell people, you know, the it's not HIV AIDS that's going to kill me. No, it's what it's it does to be your body. What it creates the other opportunities, exactly. infections, exactly. or comorbidity diseases, those exactly. kinds of illnesses. You know, those are the things that are going to. And I can tell you, I've had pneumonia five times. Wow, wow, you know, wow. And, and uh, th I used to smoke, mm -hmm. and I finally realized I was killing myself. Yeah. And with HIV, I was really, the doctor said, right. you're killing yourself. Yeah. You need to stop. Yeah. And so we stopped smoking, both yeah. my husband and yeah. I. <laughs> you know. We walked some of the <laughs> Yes, yes, <laughs> you know? 
and Absolutely. and so you know those are kind of things that but 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 as a support oh well as a support group has really been a godsend for a lot of women for a lot of women yes right and I'll tell you and we yeah. have chapters. You yeah. do? Yeah, we have chapters. I was gonna, you know what, I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to ask that a, a, a while back, but then I, I lost track of that. But yes. We I have a chapter ask. in D.C. Um, that Carol Massey started. Okay. Who was our previous executive director, passed away. It, right, yeah, yeah, she just, yeah, yeah. she just unfortunately yeah. passed away. Yeah. Not too and long um, ago. we, we uh, work a lot with a women's group in New York. Um, they they were a women's group and they kind of have communication with us. In fact, they sent a busload of New York women down here. Down here youngest, for the young and the youngest. We have women come from Virginia. We've had women come from as far as Indiana. We have women come from all over wow. to this youngins and. And youngins you know what? What I'd like to uh, get you to share, if you would, before we wrap up, our first of what I hope if you'll agree, yes. to be many more opportunities to come and converse with you. Mm -hmm. Could you talk to viewers at home about if there's a woman or a women's group that would like to have yourself or someone from your organization talk about how they would start a chapter? Yes. Um, a lot of times uh, you could start women uh, women's chapters through the clinics. Okay. Um, that's helpful if you have some kind of way of advertising in the clinic right. that you want to start a women's group. Um, and you can look on our website, which is owell.org. O-W-E-L. O-W-E-L. O -W -E -L. And Old Women o Embracing Life. Capital O-W-E-L. And um, it will tell you a lot of uh, the parameters of starting women. It's really a support group. It's just getting Fantastic. a bunch of women together. Um, we try to get donations for people to get it. So it's get it like lunch. Yes. And sometimes that's the only meal some of these women have I all know. day. I know. You know, so we have lunch together, mm -hmm. and and that's helpful in not eating alone. Right. And sharing. Yes. You know, and so. And that sharing is caring. Yes. It really yes. Is. It really is. Well, Stephanie, I want to thank you so very much. Well, thank you for you having me. You have enlightened me given me a wonderful history lesson about your life as you uh, have survived and I would like to say thrived yes. and continue to thrive yes. as a woman, an African American woman living with HIV. Yes. So I want to thank you so much. Thank you. So much, thank so you for much. having You're me. Right Come back soon. I absolutely <laughs> will. And for all of you at home, remember don't be sorry, be fierce. Thanks again for tuning in. I'm Jerome.